Welcome to this edition of Just One Thing. In this episode, I'm going to talk about Windows Azure Local Storage. My name is Adam Graholski, and I'm a technical evangelist with RBA Consulting. So one of the challenges uh, in Azure, which is a stateless environment, is the fact that there are times when you do need to write temporary data uh, to the local file system of where that um, you know, where that service may be running. Um, it could just be buffered until it's going somewhere else. Maybe it's just temporary data. You just need a place to write to. And keep in mind, since Windows Azure is platform as a service, that underlying file system is abstracted from you. So you don't necessarily know where to write. You might not have a D driver, an E driver, a C driver. Things might get swapped around where you don't have permissions to one or the other. Windows Azure Storage was implemented to help overcome those challenges. So each role can define an amount of local storage. So that local storage is protected space on the local drive. So that means if I will, all, it means I will always, or your role will always have a, this space to write to on the local drive. In each instance, we'll have that space. It may not always be in the same spot, but we'll talk about how it's abstracted for you so you don't have to actually worry about the physical location of where that storage resides. It is considered volatile. It shouldn't be considered permanent. When roles recycle, they get moved around by the app fabric controller, whatever. That data may not be there. It really should just be considered a buffer, just a, a kind of a working directory for temp data um, that your applications will not have a negative consequence from if that data goes away. Uh, the size can be anywhere from 1 meg to 20 plus gigs. Uh, just really depends on the limits of the file system itself associated with the role. And you define it in the CS def file, so the definition file. There's also a UI that we'll take a look at. So this is really simple to work with, so I just want to actually show you a demo to go about using uh, local storage. So what I'm going to do in this demo is show you how to write a file out to local storage in Windows Azure. What I have already created in Visual Studio is a Windows Azure project with a simple worker role that will serve as our mechanism for writing out to that file. The first thing I need to do is configure the role to use local storage. To do that, I'll simply go into the role's properties and you'll notice there's an entry for local storage. I can just add, add local storage here. We'll call this my local storage. Default, I'll give it two gigs even though we don't need it. And clean roll on recycle. What this will do is anytime the roll is recycled, it'll wipe out any data in that directory. So once I have it configured, the local storage configured that is, let's go into the worker role and actually use it. Delete that. All right, so first we just need to get the local resource. So let's call it a folder in role environment. Okay, local resource, and then I just need to pass in the name, so it was my local storage. Then I want to create a file path for the file that I want to, that I'll be writing out. So folder root path. Now this is the key. Uh, in Windows Azure, this path, this root path, could actually change. Change. Uh, right now it resides on the C drive. I'll show you where that is in a little bit. But Microsoft may decide to move it to the E drive. They may separate it off into an F drive. By using this storage abstraction. We don't care. It won't impact our applications uh, as long as we go through the local resource rather than trying to go to the raw file path. And then we'll go uh, new file .txt. Now I'll just want to um, if delete the file if it's there. And then I'll just use a stream writer. Oops to write out to the file. So I'll just instantiate a new one with our file path. And let's just write a nice little message. Hello, local storage. And that's it. So using the same kind of IO commands, using the same streams you're used to using when working with files, the only key is you're just getting the file path through the local resource. But let's step into this. Uh, I want to show you a couple things. So one of the things that's nice to see is where are these files actually getting written to on my local machine. Um, so if that way, if you wanted to actually take a look at the files, you could. So here we go. So if you take a look at the file path, you'll see where it's getting uh, dropped. So it's in this uh, app data 
um, basically this really long path. Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Actually, why don't we pop that open now? There we go. Uh, I believe it was local. Is that correct? Local, yes. And then it goes into this whole DFP zero. I believe we should be on deployment 360. So you'll see here, and then this actually mimics exactly what you can see in Azure. So here's my directory. Here's my actual local storage. So this is the this is the local storage I defined up in my web role. Um, it translates to a directory on my system right now. There's no files. If I step through this code, and we'll go back to the directory. There's our nice file. There's our text. and we'll actually stop debugging at this point. Okay, so pretty easy. I mean, in terms of working with files on the local system, very easy to do. I do want to show you uh, how this manifests itself up in Azure. So I've got an instance deployed out here that I'll remote into quickly. I'll open that up. And what you'll see here is kind of how the file system is laid out in Azure. Um, so just a few things to be aware of. One th one big thing to be aware of is that this could, it could really change at any point in time, and that's one of the benefits of. Oh, there we go. Yes, open. There we go. Yes, I would love to connect to this computer. And okay. So this is Windows Server 2008 R2. I'll go to computer, and one of the things to notice here is that you actually have three drives. This could change to two, could change to three. This is one of the benefits of the platform and service model that you get with Windows Azure. Currently, and I say currently, as I said, this could change at any point in time, local storage is on the C drive. It's under resources. See here, this mimics that folder structure we saw uh, on my local machine, kind of the, the simulator, the emulated environment. If I go to directory, You'll see here, here's my local storage. And I go to new file. That's that's the file um, I, we, we saw created earlier. Now this, this could move at any point in time um, based on how Microsoft sees it to be most um, efficient in terms of managing the file system, files, etc. So by using local storage, uh, the abstraction of the file system, you're insulated from these moves. If you're coding, you know, hard coding to C resources, directory, whatever, um, and Microsoft says, hey, we're shutting that down, we're moving things elsewhere, you would actually have to go back through and refactor your work. So local storage is a great way to avoid those kinds of problems. So as you can see, when, when working with the local file system in Azure, local storage really is the way to go, uh, as it abstracts the actual file system uh, away for you. That way, if if Microsoft decides to change how it's organized and structured, your applications will not be impacted by it. So definitely, if you're going to be using that local file system, definitely use the local storage uh, APIs to make it uh, a lot easier and a lot safer for your apps. And that's it for this episode of Just One Thing.